Tens of millions of people in China are under lockdown, including in the largest city, Shanghai. Thailand's infection numbers continue to creep up, already much higher than at their peak last year. In Hong Kong, morgues are overwhelmed and patients being turned away from hospitals. In South Korea, health authorities are reporting the highest number of cases per capita in the world. And in Vietnam, they're also reporting record case numbers, being in the top 10 for total infections over the past few weeks. In other parts of Asia, the story is completely different, with the worst of their Omicron surge seemingly in the rearview mirror. Over the past two years, places like Singapore, South Korea, even China, were reported as COVID-19 success stories. Their stringent, even draconian border rules helping them keep case numbers low. And total deaths too, when compared to much of the rest of the world. And a bit further south, the low infection rates in Australia and New Zealand before the Omicron variant overwhelmed their earlier defences. But as many countries are now reopening and trying to reboot their battered economies, much of Asia is still in a COVID twilight zone. On one hand, trying to reopen, but on the other hand, trying to cope with the surging numbers. Sure, Omicron and its latest variants are a key part of the cause, running rampant through countries with previously low infection rates. But that's not the full story. In places like Hong Kong and even South Korea, the skyrocketing infection numbers are being blamed on authorities being caught off guard, perhaps being caught up in their own hubris after successfully flattening the curve and keeping total case numbers low in the past. Others blame a lack of planning by the very same authorities, despite witnessing what's been happening in other parts of the world and having so much data and a two-year warm-up. In the case of Vietnam and South Korea, both countries have been battling to get their borders open, even despite the surge in cases, with the easing of restrictions driving the daily records high. Another factor in the cases of Vietnam and South Korea is that both also have well-developed testing capacities, perhaps causing them to find more cases than other countries. There's also a theory that suggests the generally more cautious approach and the population's willingness to cooperate with their governments on issues like wearing masks has certainly slowed both the arrival of Omicron in parts of Asia and then slowed the uptake of new infections. That delay still continues as Asia experiences the Omicron variant months after many countries outside the Asian region. The countries now suffering the surge in cases all closed their borders early on in the pandemic, shutting themselves off from the world. With even the fewer cases breaking through, these countries were vigilant with tracking and tracing, mitigating clusters, social distancing, curfews and the enforcement of mask wearing. It worked and it held off the worst of the pandemic for so long. But in 2022, and with the experience of other countries which had earlier Omicron surges to guide them, many of the governments turned to the living with COVID strategy, proudly enunciated by the PMs of Singapore, Thailand and Malaysia, President Duterte of the Philippines and former President Moon in South Korea. But the living with COVID strategy and the low infection numbers over the past two years gave Omicron a clear run. Now some of these countries are battling to cope with their strategy, some better than others. China, on the other hand, has not budged from its zero COVID strategy and facing big rises of new infections, it's gone back into full lockdown mode in some of its largest population centres. Hong Kong was also betting on a zero COVID strategy, now it's facing a preventable disaster. Whilst the lockdowns clearly kept the numbers low in the early days, the much higher transmissibility of Omicron variants is making a mockery of the earlier strategies. Meanwhile, much of the Western world, now way past the worst of their Omicron surges, is looking to Asia and wondering why on earth they're having a delayed rise in new infections and why it's taking so long to start waning, given the sharp spikes and quick drops in cases in other countries. Luckily, the case numbers, whilst high, are resulting in a much lower death rate and rates of hospitalisations and general sickness. The high rate of vaccination in many of the Asian countries has at least prepared them for the current COVID challenges.
In the cases of South Korea and New Zealand, both have a very high vaccine rate. And crucially, they worked hard to vaccinate their elderly, the most vulnerable to severe diseases and death from the coronavirus. And although funeral homes in South Korea are now struggling to keep up with the sudden surge of COVID deaths, the country's fatality rate is around 0.13%, lower than the US's very high 1.2%, the UK's 0.18% and France's 0.6%. COVID-19, specifically the Omicron variant and subvariants, is playing itself out at a different rate and with a slower cycle of initial surges and declines. In some parts of Asia, it's still on the rise.